One of the most evil kings in English history was Henry VIII. He was a man who would, during his reign, execute around 70,000 people, which equated to around 3% of the population. But even two of his own wives would lose their heads inside of the Tower of London. But as king, he caused chaos throughout the 1500s, and he would split England and divide it in the name of religious turbulence. Henry would, in his final years, become a huge man, and he was a shadow of the handsome and strong king that he was in his early years. His life became incredibly dangerous due to his overeating and size, and he would, in 1547, succumb to his lifestyle and gluttony. Henry's death was believed to have been rather peaceful, but he was a man who had suffered for a number of years, and the king's illnesses and injuries may have contributed to his death. But the country mourned their king greatly. But what is the story of his death? As Henry VIII got older and the years passed by, Henry became huge in size. He was obese and would have to be moved around his palaces using wheelchairs, pulleys and mechanical devices, which would get him out of bed. Hoists would help him get around, but this was a sorry sight compared to how he used to look. As a young man, he was a keen athlete who was a brilliant tennis player, but a number of injuries would lead to his mobility being greatly affected, and the king suffered from gout. He would not walk around much, and he would still eat a large amount of food, and his court would have daily banquets. A jousting accident he suffered in 1536 made Henry's final years very different. He sustained a serious injury, and a wound that had been very difficult to treat, and it then would fester and become infected and ulcerous, and with this the king could not move really at all. But also, following a jousting accident, the king was knocked out for a long time and for hours. This was greatly distressing for his then wife, Anne Boleyn. When the king came around, many said that he was not the same man. Henry VIII had suffered a serious brain injury, and despite not being killed by this, many historians have questioned that he would forever be changed. After his injury, the king became incredibly rash, and he would make some very poor decisions, and he would get through his next wives very quickly. But despite all of the king's health issues, his final moments would be rather peaceful. Henry VIII died on the 28th of January 1547, inside of Whitehall Palace. He was a large and grotesque, and on the day before his death, the king's confessor was summoned, and he was given Holy Communion. He had gone downhill massively, and his death to the royal doctors was imminent in their opinions. The king knew he was dying, and that it would come soon, but the royal doctors became incredibly worried and they were concerned that if they told the king what was coming, then they would be said to have been predicting the death of the king, and this was incredibly serious. And because of this, no one told the king what was happening, as they were worried that they would be dragged out to Tower Hill, and they would be executed. But it was a courtier, Sir Anthony Denny, who would tell the king what was coming, that he was dying, and he told the king that, in mass judgment, he was not like to live, and he said to the king that he should remember his sins as every Christian man should do. The king claimed he did believe in God with all of his strength, and he said that Christ would pardon all of my sins, though they be greater than can be. With this statement, it's believed that the king was reflecting on the mistakes and tragedy that he had inflicted during his time on the throne. He was a man who would execute two of his wives, outcast many of them, and then also execute some of his close friends, such as Thomas Cromwell. He would regret many of his actions, including Cromwell's execution, and also many of the leading churchmen of the country would find themselves losing their heads or being hanged, drawn and quartered. This brutally summed up the reign of King Henry VIII, and there were doubts whether he would go to heaven or not after his death. The king, in his final demand, asked Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, to be summoned to come to his side. He asked Cranmer to be there in his death and to comfort him, and the king could not speak when Cranmer finally got there to the king's bedside. It was said of the king's final moments in life that, at the end, there was no master, no servant, no prince, churchman, just a priest preparing a departing soul for eternity. Cranmer begged Henry to give a sign that he trusted Christ for salvation, and in response, he felt the grip on his hand tighten slightly. 
it was an evangelical departure. No anointing, no reading of Latin prayers, just a simple acknowledgement of the all-sufficient atoning work of Christ. Cranmer would have been glad of that. At 2am the king died, and this ended the reign of King Henry VIII. The exact cause of Henry's death is not completely known, but it's believed that he may have succumbed to a heart-related condition linked to his size, or a pulmonary embolism. But after the king's death, there was a charade carried out inside of the royal household to not let the secret out that the king had died. Because of this, servants were not told that the king had died, and the kitchens of the palace continued to bring food to the king's bedchambers, and it would be the job of the Lord Chancellor, Rothesley, to announce the death of the king to Parliament. The transition between monarchs was believed to have been a dangerous time at this time, and people believed that the kingdom was weak and liable to attack without a monarch on the throne. But Rothesley would state in front of Parliament in tears that before the Lord of the King's Majesty Privy Council, and there was declared to them by my Lord Chancellor and other the death of the King's Majesty, Henry VIII, our Sovereign Lord, which deceased to Almighty God on Friday last, being the 28th of January, and straightly charging them to keep the King's peace and to look to safeguard of the King's Majesty Chamber of London, and so they departed. Rothersley would also then state that the same day in the afternoon, the King's Majesty Edward VI came on to the Tower of London and rode in Oldgate, and so along the wall by the crossed friars to the Tower Hill, and he entered the Red Bulwark, where Sir John Gage, Constable of the Tower, received His Majesty on horseback. Our late Sovereign King, Henry VIII, declared by his will under his great seal, his dearly beloved son and heir, our Sovereign Lord now, Edward VI, to succeed to the Crown Imperial. Sir Edward Seymour to be Lord Protector and Governor of the King's Majesty and the realm of England until the King's Majesty comes to his lawful age of 18 years. But preparations were then made for Henry's funeral. He had during his life commissioned a huge tomb which, if finished, would have been the largest tomb ever made for a monarch in England and possibly the whole of history. It would have cost a fortune if finished, but over the days after the king's death, his body was embalmed and it was then encased in lead and it was then placed inside of a coffin and was left inside of the presence chamber at Whitehall. The body of Henry VIII lay in state and it would then be moved into the chapel as bells tolled across England for the life of Henry VIII. But on the 14th of February, Henry's body was taken to its final resting place, St George's Chapel. It was said that the vast coffin, covered with pals of blue velvet and cloth of gold, lay on a chariot drawn by black, caprisoned horses, who drew it along roads that had been swept and even widened for the occasion. On top of the coffin was a wax effigy of the king, carved by Nicholas Bellin, and clad in crimson velvet, trimmed with miniver. On its head was a crown atop a night cap of black satin, set full of precious stones. It wore jewelled bracelets and velvet gloves adorned with rings. The cortege of the king then rested at Sion Abbey, and whilst this happened, it's believed that the king's body may have exploded inside of the coffin, and there were rumours that this was then picked at by dogs as it leaked through the cracks of the coffin. But when the coffin arrived at Windsor, it was so large that sixteen strong yeomen of the guard had to carry the heavy coffin into the church and then lower it into the vault of the choir in St George's Chapel. He was then laid to rest with Jane Seymour, his third wife, who died following giving birth to the king's son and successor, Edward VI. Today he is buried in an unremarkable way, and there are no large effigies marking the site of his burial just a marble floor slab that also shows Henry VIII was buried alongside King Charles I, the executed King of England. But Henry VIII was a brutal and shocking king, who despite having six wives would execute two of them, and would treat the rest shockingly. His lifestyle caused his death, and his health was very poor, but he would be a shadow of his former self when he was a young man. He was a king who reigned over the country with brutality and horror, and some of the most shocking executions in history took place during his time on the throne. Thank you for watching and support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.